Today I'm in Vilnius in Lithuania and I'm going to ride a unicorn. I guess I've done this before but this is a unicorn so I had to do it again. Pretty fun. Okay, I won't do that again. Since my last video, I've been thinking a lot about the first video I produced and what's in it, and I asked for some feedback from a friend I met here in the hostel here in Lithuania. His name is Andrew. So anyway, he sent me this message the other day after he looked at my video. He says, about your video, first of all, you should understand who your audience is. So yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that, who my audience is. First, I want to do a video for friends, for family. And also, I think I want to do a video to connect with people that think like me, like-minded people who are interested in exploring the world, interested in minimalism, nomadic living, um, alternative living, um, people who are passionate about learning and, uh, and growing as individuals. He says that my seven minute video really lacks um, content for the seven minutes. I think that's excellent. After I've gone back and looked at the video, that critique is spot on. That's exactly correct. I did a very poor job of describing what there is to see in Riga. So I thought a lot about this and decided I don't want to do travel videos. There's lots of travel videos out there. There's guidebooks, Lonely Planet, Wikipedia, Wiki Travel. So I want to take a different tack. I want to take a different approach. And so I've decided that maybe I'll do one or two videos a week. I'll talk, talk about things I'm passionate about, things that I'm interested in. And then maybe have some interviews with people I meet. Um, other travelers, other people that are living sort of alternative lifestyles, and then maybe a few things about the culture that I'm in and, and what I'm seeing. Um, I'm going to take all these to heart and try to do a better job in the future with my editing and coming up with a little bit better content. But I did want to address this in sort of a Q&A type thing in this video. There was a lot of wind noise in that last video. I was using this camera here. Uh, the video I'm recording right now is directly on my computer. This is a Nikon S6900. It's got this little flip screen, which is sort of cool. A little pop-out. It has the little built-in microphone, so it gets lots of wind noise. Uh, not much I can do about that. There's no plug-in for external noise. If you'd like to add some comments, some feedback, uh, ideas, suggestions, then please go ahead and write them in the comment area below the video here. I'd love to hear this is the statue of Gedimenas, and he uh, sounded Vilnius city. And there's a legend about him that he uh, rode with his horse uh, for a long time, and then he stopped uh, to take uh, to for the night. And when he uh, fell asleep, uh, he dreamed that on a, a, a high hill there was a steel uh, wolf that was howling. And then when he woke up and next day uh, talked to his Vaidala, which is a pagan sort of priest, uh, he said that uh, that legend means that he has to establish a city in there. with uh, Anthony and I met Anthony in Uruguay. In Uruguay. Uruguay. Colonia. Colonia. In Colonia. Yeah, Colonia. We met in a hostel in Colonia. Yeah. And um, he was in the same room with me and I noticed that he was carrying around this funny little backpack that it, this is pretty cool. Inside of here is a drum. So why are you in Lithuania today? What what brought you here? Oh, uh, well, I'm here in uh, Lithuania uh, visiting my friends that I met in Colombia. And I'm leaving tonight, I'm off my flight tonight. Okay, cool. And uh, so we get to hang out for a couple hours here. We're having our coffee here in a coffee shop. It's raining outside, so it's a perfect opportunity to hang out with a friend that I met. By the way, this is the great thing about traveling in hostels, is you get to see friends that you meet in the other side of the world 
and you run into them months later in a totally different part of the year, world, this is probably the fourth or fifth time this has happened in Europe, so it's really amazing. Yeah, Europe is very small, so you will see, it's like uh, South America, you keep bumping into people because people keep traveling South America up north or south, or south to north, and in Europe you will find out quickly that people do the same, they, they have all, almost the same itinerary all the time. So I'm pretty sure you will keep bumping into people. Yeah, this is the KGB museum for the Holocaust genocide victims, so not a fun topic to deal with. Um, entrance is four euros, so anyway I just bought a ticket, so I'm going to go ahead and wander in and I'll shoot a little bit of video in there, but don't want everybody to get totally depressed with my video, but anyway, I think this is an important part, something that people need to see. They deported about 41,000 people in May of 1948 and another 30,000 in March of 1949, 23,000 more in October 1951. All these people were deported to the far reaches of the Soviet Union and they were typically taken in the middle of the night um, with only one hour uh, worth of preparation time to gather up their things. Zupio. This is sort of like an artist's haven, bohemian, hippie place. Can you tell me why this place is so cool? What, what's the name of it? Ozupis. Ozupis. Geographically, okay. in Lithuanian language, that means behind the river. Ozupis. Okay. Yes. Because it became a very bohemian place, mm -hmm. a little bit closed, maybe with its own rules. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but um, now we are Ujupas Art Incubator, an institution, not a community, <laughs> not only a, a community. Sounds very official. And sounds official, and it is official now. And over by their official constitution, which is posted on a wall, it's sort of cool, it's 41 points, and they have it written in about. 20, 25 languages here. Uh, the right to be happy, the right to be unhappy, the right to have a dog, to have a cat, to live by the river, that's like point number one. 